Here we have the Dan Set Major Deluxe 21 record player. This one uses an MC1961 circuit, which has the EL84 pentode valve. Also found in other record players such as a Bermuda and Celebrity, etc. This circuit gives us about 2.5 watts of power, single-ended, single-stage amplification with just the one valve. We've got a small elliptical loudspeaker inside, which is often made by the company ELAC. Uh, the BSR record deck, Monarch, um, and the TC8 BSR crystal type cartridge. I've got Phil Master Service Technician who's going to take you through the circuit diagram and explain things a bit further for you. Danset MC1961. Well, they moved on a bit from some of the circuits we've looked at. This is an AC only unit. Motor across the mains, double pole main switching at long last. The luxury of having an electrostatic shield um, between the primary and secondary of the mains transformer. What isn't moving on at all is the half wave rectifier. Um, they could, for the cost of three more diodes, have put that into a bridge. There was a time, of course, when solid state rectifiers were really rather expensive and not very efficient. Now you'd pay even retail a penny, penny and a half plus fat for a 1N4007 diode, which will take a thousand volts PIV. You wouldn't try putting a thousand volts across that one, I can assure you, unless you like sparks and um, pretty foul smelling stuff. That rectifier is almost certainly a copper oxide or a selenium. Anyway, half-wave rectifier, there we have the LT winding, the 6.3 volts powers the valve and the lamp, and they earth one side of it, they don't sensor tap it. So in the normal low-cost way of doing things, they feed the output valves anode directly from the rectifier cathode, using a 32 microfarad combined reservoir and smoothing capacitor. They then have a 4K7 resistor and 16 microfarads which smooths the screen grid supply. The screen grid drawing very little current, it means that that's going to be a very smooth supply there. Not much to say about the rest of the circuit, frankly, it's so simple. Output transformer speaker, they've earthed the secondary on one side. The tone control is in the form of a 0.05 microfarad or 50 nanofarad in series with a 25k pot. So if you turn that down there and short circuit the resistor you get a considerable amount of treble attenuation if you turn it up to 25k. Because of the pen high, sorry I'll start again, the pentode having a higher output impedance the output level rises with frequency so you get the typical pentode characteristic as an output valve with rising output with rising frequency you would normally have a fixed compensation capacitor across there they have simply added the pot there so that you can adjust it so you can have treble boost thanks to the valve's impedance or you can have treble cut at the bottom or if you set it somewhere in the middle you get a neutral response the EL84 doesn't require much in the way of bias volts, so we've only got 100 ohms there and the 25 microfarad capacitor, which is a bit mean, frankly, but anyway, they have bypassed it. Volume control on the grid of the valve with the inevitable effect that should this pot go scratchy, it goes very scratchy because the very small grid current, which should be well under a microamp, but it flows through there, so if it lifts off, you get a sudden spike in the DC voltage. Horrible noises. Something that might confuse you is this, the switch. That switch is on the turntable itself. When you turn the record off, it opens and disconnects the pickup. Um, a more elegant way, frankly, will be to short circuit the cartridge, because that is likely to give you something of a clunk each time it works, also, if with age it gets dirty, you'll get an intermittent signal, whereas if they shorted the grid out when it wasn't needed, and then went open circuit when it was needed, you wouldn't get those effects. The input will be almost certainly for crystal rather than ceramic cartridge, so it's not very sensitive. Not marked on this circuit, 
but this wire here, and I would have thought that wire, and possibly, depending on the layout, that one, will actually be coaxed to screen them against hum pickup. If you found this tutorial very useful and would like to see more, then please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Patreon, Facebook and Twitter accounts. So far to date we have covered dozens of vintage valve amplifiers and equipment, starting with basic items such as Danset, Bush and Philips record players. We've also covered the Mullard 33 and the 510 valve amplifiers, the mic amp and mixer circuit based around the EF86, the Hacker and Dynatron record players, uh, Leak TL10, Quad valve amplifiers, GEC MOV division, Radford, Pi, Dynaco Stereo 70 and many other British and foreign audio circuits. We are in the process of shooting lots more videos on a regular basis and we will be uploading often. We cover hi-fi, musicians and recording studio equipment as well as vintage radio circuits. Please go to the website for more details.